Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. On this episode of Solutions, we're building two equations that return the location of blank cells. The first solution uses the match function to return the location of the first blank cell within a range. The second solution uses the filter function to return the row numbers for all blank cells within a range. Let's get started. You know, for my, my intros, I, I usually try to have something a little humorous, but for this one, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. The first equation we're building uses the match function to return the location of the first blank cell within a data range. If there are no blank cells in the data, the equation returns the first row number following the end of our data set. One way to determine if a cell is empty is to use the isBlank function. Let's test this out by entering the isBlank function in cell I2. isBlank takes a single parameter. In our example, we'll select cell D5. isBlank returns true since cell D5 is blank. If we change the isBlank function to look at cell D6, for example, it will return false since D6 is not blank. To get started building our match equation, first enter an equal sign, the function name match, and then an open parentheses. The first parameter of the match function is the value we are looking for. Since we know we will be using the isBlank function, and this function returns true for blank cells, we'll enter the keyword true as the first parameter in the match equation. The second parameter of match is the range we want the equation to examine. For our scenario, we'll enter the isBlank function with all of column D as its parameter. Passing a range into isBlank will return an array of trues and falses. The trues correspond to any blank cells in the provided range, whereas the falses are for any non-blank cells. At this point, our match equation will look for the first true, which represents the first blank cell in column D, which is the range passed into the isBlank function. For the last parameter of our match function, we'll enter a zero so that it returns a value based on an exact match. Closing the parentheses and pressing enter, we get the number five, which is the location of the first blank cell in column D. We can modify this equation to return the last row number containing a value that occurs before the blank by simply subtracting one from the match equation. Doing this in cell I3 gives us the value four since cell D4 is in the row immediately before the first blank row. If our data doesn't contain any blank cells, our equation would return the first row after the data set. To see this, let's copy the equation in cell I2 and paste it into cell J2. We'll replace column D in the isBlank function with column F. Pressing enter, we get 22, which is the first row following our data set. Like before, we can get the last row of our data by simply subtracting one from the match equation. Doing this in cell J3 returns the value 21. Knowing where data ends is great for validation or as an input to another function that needs to know the height of your data. The match function is great if you want the value of the first blank cell, for example, row five in column D. However, the match function won't be able to tell us about the blank cells D12, D15, or D19. To solve for this, we can build an equation using the filter function that will return the location of all blank cells within a provided range. The filter function is available in Excel 365 and Excel 2021. Click the YouTube card for an introduction to the filter function. I'll also include a link in the description below. In cell I7, start by typing an equal sign, the word filter, and an open parentheses. The first parameter of filter is the range we want to filter. Normally, we would select a range from our dataset. However, for our purpose in this video, we want a range of row numbers that correspond to our dataset as opposed to the values within our dataset. To accomplish this, we'll use the row function. The row function takes a single parameter. For this equation, we'll enter D2 through D21. This is different from our match function where we entered the entire column. For this filter equation to work properly, we need to enter the specific range of our dataset. Entering the range D2 through D21 into the row equation gives us an array of numbers from 2 through 21 as the first parameter of our filter equation. The second parameter of the filter function determines which values in the first parameter to return. The second parameter must result in an array of trues and falses. Like our match equation, we'll accomplish this by using the isBlank function. We'll pass the same parameter into isBlank that we used in the first parameter, which is D2 through D21. The last parameter of the filter function is what we want returned if there are no instances of true in the second parameter. 
In other words, what we want returned if there are no blank cells in the range D2 through D21. This parameter is optional, but it's a good idea to enter something that is appropriate to your needs. For our equation, we'll enter the value no blanks within quotes. We'll enter a closing parentheses and press enter. We now have a list of all row numbers corresponding to blank cells within the range D2 through D21. Let's see what happens if our range doesn't contain any blank cells. Let's copy the equation from cell I7 and paste it into cell J7. We'll update both ranges from D2 through D21 to F2 through F21. Pressing enter, we get the value we provided in the third parameter, which in our equation is the string no blanks, since there are no blank cells in the range F2 through F21. These solutions are great as either inputs to other equations or as sort of a checks and balances to ensure your data doesn't have blank cells where it's not supposed to. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you want to keep expanding your Excel knowledge, check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.